Awesome. Uh, welcome, everybody, once again. Good to see you all. I hope you all are doing, uh, staying safe uh, and well. Um, hey, uh, Kiran, can I request you to uh, start us off with a word of prayer, please? Yes, sir. sir. Father God, we just come before your throne, Father God, once again. Father God, just give your blessing, wisdom, understanding, Father God, that we can understand the subject, Father God, and utilize to our, uh, our, our city and our nation, our places, Father, Father God, ministry. Father God, give your revelation more, Father God, that we can walk through your way, your kingdom way, Father God. Bless to each and every one. Bless to sir and all his students, Father God, our students willing to join, Father God, help them to join, Father God, the classes. Thank you, Father God, listening our prayer. Thanking you. Coming time, I'm just submitting to your hand. Take care of everything. Almighty Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Uh, thank you, Kiran. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen and uh, we'll get started. Okay. Uh, so, just to quickly recap, uh, if I can go all the way back. Uh, okay, so just to do a quick recap of the chapters that we've covered so far. First one was all about worship ministry uh, in the Bible. Uh, we learned about Abraham's altars as man of altars, how we God expects us uh, to be uh, people, uh, uh, worshippers, uh, you know, and, um, and and worship ministry in the Old Testament and in the New Testament from in the context of the tabernacle of David, tabernacle of Moses, uh, and also a temple of how worship was orchestrated and administered in the in the temple of Solomon according to the instructions given by David to them. And we see that uh, generations after generations followed that, right? And, um, and we see a different kind of pattern evolving uh, in... Uh, evolving in the New Testament, how worship ministry takes on a different shape, uh, you know, just slightly different uh, in the New Testament uh, and uh, an era of synagogues uh, evolving. And it was at a fully developed stage at this point, right? Uh, and so singing was given a lot of importance in the in the New Testament as well. It was not just in the Old Testament. You cannot have the new without the old, right? And people, every, 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 every Jew that was saved, uh, you know, and who who became a Christian, who believed uh, who believed in Jesus Christ, were still Jews, and they still you know remembered and followed everything that they practiced uh, as a Jew, right? Now the different festivals, different sacrifices, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, and we saw in depth the, the 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 tabernacle of Moses, how worship was organized and and uh, and ministered in the tabernacle of Moses. Um, and every, every every piece of furniture has its own uh, significance attached to it. So that was the tabernacle of Moses. And then we briefly saw, uh, saw the backstory uh, of the tabernacle of David uh, and, and what, you know, what it means and how God has promised to raise uh, the tabernacle of David in these days as prof as prof prophesied by Amos. And then again, later, uh, quoted in the book of Acts by James. Okay, so all of that, and then a few points uh, from the lessons that we learned from the day, what we can learn from David's worship team is that um, they were set apart uh, for ministry and they were all uh, in, under the supervision of their fathers and the king, right? And they were all trained and skilled. Uh, you know, they were young and old, teacher and student. So there was a mix of generations in the in the in the worship team that David put together. Okay, so that's a, a chapter one, a, a pretty big chapter. Uh, I think the biggest of, of them all. Uh, and then uh, we move on to chapter two, uh, just talking about the brief journey through time, how worship ministry has evolved through time, right? Um, and I mean. And the impact that it has on us, uh, because uh, you know, like I shared last class, is that understanding uh, our history tells us, uh, you know, who we are, uh, where we come from, isn't it? 
Um, so, and one of the places that we started looking at was hymns and the birth of hymns uh, and the richness uh, in the literature and also the complexity in music of the hymns, okay? Uh, just powerful, powerful uh, tools for worship. And then, uh, we, you know, we saw that there was a birth of the contemporary uh, Christian music also known as CCM, which is Christian Contemporary Music, how it started its journey in the 1960s, uh, because a lot of teenagers, a youth, a lot of youth were leaving the church because they didn't just didn't couldn't connect with the church anymore, or they didn't feel that the church was relevant to them anymore. Um, so they wanted to worship Jesus, although they believed in Jesus in the way that the secular people also, you know, use. so, and that gave birth to uh, rock music. Um, and we, we studied about Larry David Norman, who's known as the father of Christian rock, uh, who influenced a lot of other young, uh, young people, which resulted in a bunch of artists and bands being released during that era from 1960. And we see that it was completely developed by the 1980s. Um, right. And a few examples of all these uh, wonderful, great artists that we know of and that we've been influenced and impacted by as well. Okay. Um, and then a few pros and cons of this movement called the contemporary Christian music. Uh, the pros are definitely uh, that it still stays with the church. It's still with the church. Okay, 50, 40, 40 years, 50 years later, uh, we are still being influenced uh, by what happened in the 60s. Uh, right. And the songs that were written by them, uh, by songs that was written by Keith Green, just, just to name a, a, a few. Right. Petra, et cetera, et cetera. But with the positives, there are also its negatives, right? Uh, one of the examples that we looked at was how the Christian awards, um, you know, uh, kind of follow the similar pattern of, of the world. Okay, awards in itself are not wrong, like we discussed, but it's in the manner that we, you know, that, that they go about doing it that shows the influence of all this the secular world as well, where, you know, it seems like uh, worship ministry has become an industry where, when it should be a priesthood, okay? It's very important that we don't miss that mark. Uh, and the second uh, negative uh, con, if I should say, is that the, the, the band mentality has, uh, can also enter the worship team members okay, that it's been influenced uh, the worship team members were also influenced um, by this culture the band mentality culture okay so we went through a bunch of points uh, to distinguish and differentiate uh, what is the band mentality and what should be the mentality of the worship team members okay uh, the band is a is a, is a closed circle it's it's about ownership whereas the worship team is about an open circle everybody is welcome the young and old teacher and student worship team is about stewardship and worship ministry is about serving uh, while band is exclusive and for privileged group uh, and uh, the band can be gender biased or prejudiced like okay boy band girl band etc etc um the ogs uh, while the worship ministry is open to all generations right um, um and and a, a couple more points uh, regarding this and with this point we concluded chapter two uh we see how worship ministry has evolved through time it was not the same like how it was in the 1920s or 50s 60s it's not you know it's evolved Right. So that was chapter two all about. OK, uh, now we move on to chapter three, okay? the actual introduction of the practical aspects of worship ministry. OK, the practical aspects of worship ministry. Now, um, I'm not sure if everybody has actually taken a printout of the PDF. I, it's fine if you have not no, no problem. But uh, I mean, if you can. Uh, you, you know, it's easy to make notes uh, or I would encourage you from this point onwards, at least from this chapter onwards, to make uh, points uh, in a way that you would understand because from this chapter, it's going to be a, 
a lot of practical tips okay uh, how you can go about administrating uh, and organizing your worship ministry in the place where you, you know where god has placed you or where god will place you okay so uh, and also from this point onwards uh, i would encourage you to feel free to ask questions so you know we can make it more interactive okay if you don't understand something uh, you know or whatever it is right uh, there is no question is a silly question uh, so feel free to be uh, to interact with me okay from this chapter onwards it's very important and i and i feel that the more questions you ask uh, you know the more uh, everybody else in the classroom will also benefit off yeah is that okay okay give me a thumbs up or oh, this is not zoom you can give a thumbs up Okay. All right. So, a worship ministry as an introduction. Okay. Uh, first of all, it's just like any other ministry that is part of a church or an organization, be it the children ministry or youth ministry, uh, worship ministry, uh, whichever it is, setting up chairs and whatnot. Just like any other ministry, it's an incredible privilege and an honor. to be part of a worship ministry uh you know to get to to minister before god and to serve his people uh, it's 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 an amazing opportunity uh, and an honor right so let's just keep that in mind but having said that worship ministry has its own challenges let's be realistic as well okay it has its own challenges it's it's very different from worship leading okay so leading a worship ministry is different than leading worship let's start with that okay if you think worship ministry is all about ah uh, just leading worship and nothing else uh, my friend you are mistaken okay um the, you need to you need to have you need to uh, have a certain skill set okay for example uh, like it says in the notes like you need to grow in your leadership as you look at the ministry tasks or responsibilities of pastoring a team okay you should highlight that if you can scheduling bands working with your senior pastor uh, creating a uh, systems that work for your church okay uh, all of this skills has to be developed and um, put into practice right because uh, worship ministry in the beginning it might it might see is like oh it's worship you know we're just going to play music and sing songs and uh, you know have fun uh, so it may not really feel very difficult in the beginning i it might seem all you know bit, bit of roses it's like a walk in the park uh, you know it's all cool uh, but if you do that for a long time if you've been doing that for a period of time like i have been uh you will know that a worship ministry has its own set of challenges okay uh you need to have a certain leadership qualities uh and skills because you will be challenged in the worship ministry just like any ministry right worship ministry has its own set of challenges okay uh you know you need to lead a band for example see like it's mentioned there you need to lead a band the technical challenges you need to uh, you know communicate with the volunteer musicians like the members of the worship teams who are volunteering their time who are not paid uh you know you need to communicate with the worship arts leader if you have one you need to uh, communicate with the sound team with the visual effects team uh you know what not uh, the it team if necessary uh and all of that you need to remember to put a song list together you need to make sure you uh, practice with the band you need to make sure that the band practices even when you're not there um and if that was not enough you need to make sure that you are meeting with your uh, pastor on a regular basis uh, you need to keep your pastor in in the loop and other church staff members on what's happening and the congregation as well so um <laughs> worship ministry is a challenging uh ministry okay um just to put that in perspective uh it sometimes it can feel like a thankless task like uh, okay if you ever had someone come to you if you're a worship leader okay if anybody here leads worship uh if if you ever been 
if if there's been anybody who's walked up to you and said you're not my favorite worship leader not necessarily in that words uh, it's like yeah you know i don't like the songs you choose you could have done this better you could have done that better you know uh it, 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 there are chances that sometimes you can feel like it's a thankless task it's uh you know oh man nobody seems to appreciate what i'm doing you know you get you understand what i'm saying right uh, it can seem like that right uh, that's why we all need help okay we uh, we all need uh, you know we all need help from people around us so you know our stress is reduced uh, you know we that's why we need to organize and administer uh you know properly so that we don't have we don't have to carry all this stress okay so we need all the help we can get you know so that we are well prepared for worship ministry as we lead reducing stress in areas that we can reduce stress uh refining our systems so that our musicians technicians and others feel valued and cared for as we do the hard work of ministry together okay so it's not a one man show it uh, cannot be a one man show uh, you need all the help you can get okay so worship ministry um, just to summarize what we covered so far has its own set of challenges right because you are working with people it is not like just leading worship put a five, put a song list of five songs together lead worship for 30 minutes or 40 minutes whatever and move on that's just that is not worship ministry there's coordination uh, there's speaking involved there's talking communication is involved etc etc okay so that is just a brief introduction to worship ministry so um and as i mentioned that we all need help uh you need, we need to make sure like just how we make sure that our bike engines and our car engines run with proper oil and what not um there are four relationships that helps us okay it's like oil for our engines okay uh for the engine of your soul for your spirit um the four relationships that make or break us okay now i've just mentioned four it doesn't have to be an exhaustive list you know but yeah so each of the four areas of worship ministry leadership has been chosen to give you principles that you can apply okay it's not a rules like it's principles it's guidelines okay so uh no matter the size of your church or congregation or the nature of the team or teams that you lead you can use these principles for you yourself and your team okay the following four relationships while they are not the only relationships in our life demand our attention if we are to succeed in the task of building an effective worship ministry okay so i truly believe um, in experience uh, that these four relationships will help us build an effective worship ministry okay um, let's move on to the next page page 35 what's the first one it um, goes without saying right something that you've all you've listened and heard uh you know all the time our relationship with god okay that's number 1 has to be a priority never compromise your secret life with god or confuse it with your public ministry activity okay never compromise your secret life with god right uh just uh if you can remember about david and uh, david's story when he first visits a uh, king saul um saying you're you know he wants to go and fight goliath and saul says you're just a boy uh you know how can i let you go and do this and david says uh king when when a lion or a bear took my sheep away i would go after it and 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 beat it and rescue my sheep right so an uh, implication being i heard someone say this if you can kill a lion and a bear in private god will allow you or elevate you to kill a goliath in public and then you know elevate you to become a king one day um so we don't we don't go after secret life for elevation uh, sake 
but just to put that in perspective, uh, you know, it's, a secret life is important. Uh, everything that happens on stage or outside in public ministry is an overflow, right? You've heard this so many times. So your physical health, your emotional well-being, and your authority as a spiritual leader, okay? That authority is crucial. It's, 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 it's very, very important. It's priceless, okay? Uh, our authority as a spiritual leader will hinge on your capacity to cultivate your interior life with Jesus, okay? When you look at some of the famous uh, leaders in the Bible, okay, one of the first things that they lose after they fall in sin is their authority, right? But God has given us the authority uh, to trample on snakes and scorpions. But if our personal life, uh, if our secret life with God is not in check, uh, you know, when we, when we lose that oil of intimacy with God, one of the first things that we will lose is our authority, right? Um, so that's very important, guys. As a leader, you, you know, uh, keep that in check. Get on your instrument when there is no crowd to impress or lead and worship before the Lord. Uh, not only will you taste and see the goodness of the Lord in those precious daily encounters, but you will see also see your effectiveness as a worship leader grows. Okay, so your first point there is your relationship with God. Do everything in your power to make sure that is on the right track. Okay, uh, if you have to read your Bible, do that. Study the Bible whatnot. Okay, so uh, one of the things that's helped uh, me uh, and I, I took this advice I, from uh, a senior pastor, you know, another pastor uh, shared this long time ago, is that uh, give your mornings to God, your afternoons to people, like the church, your work, and your evenings to family. So, you know, uh, that kind of put, sets things in perspective. Okay, give your mornings to God. Make sure that your uh, your uh, your quiet time with him, you read, you, you read the Bible, you study the Bible, you pray, you pray in tongues, whatever it is you want to do, you have to do, do it in the mornings. For the la latter part of the day, give it to people, your work, your colleagues, uh, the people of your church, the congregation, speak with them, get in touch with them, find out how they are doing, etc. And then your evenings, uh, you know, give your time, your undivided time for your family, your mom, your mom, dad, your children, whatever that is, right? Okay, so that, that's the first relationship. You, you make, please make sure that your relationship with God is in check. It's in the right track, okay? Um, <clears throat> the second one is your relationship with your family, our relationship with our family. Our first church to which we must attend is our family, okay? Being a good husband, wife, son, daughter, father, mother, or even friend. Okay, is central to being a good worship leader and overseer of a worship ministry. Okay, uh, once again, I mean, these are all the points that we all are already familiar of, isn't it? Uh, we all know, but it's just there to uh, show the importance and the significance of it. Okay, if I'm not a, a good son at home or a husband or a father uh, at home, um, then I can't put a mask and act like I'm better in public ministry, right? Our relationship with our family, how is your relationship with your parents, uh, you know, with your, with your spouse, with your children, with your, with your siblings, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, that is another relationship you need to pay attention to. Make sure, make, do everything in your power uh, to keep that healthy. Okay, guys. So uh, let me just uh, uh, pause you quickly and, and ask. Uh, so, is there any questions, any thoughts uh, that you want to ask? Anything you want to add? Okay, all right. Okay, cool. Um, and I, 
I hope everybody's uh, you know following. Okay, um, the third relationship, and uh, this cannot be stressed enough, is uh, our relationship with our pastor. Okay, with our senior founding pastor. Okay, or with your senior pastor. Uh, if you're the senior pastor, it's cool of your church. Uh, <laughs> but uh, another relationship that you have to, uh, you know, pay attention to is uh, your relationship with your senior pastor. Okay, one of the most vital relationships in the local church is often one of the most neglected: the relationship between worship leader and the pastor of the church. You will be amazed at how many times um, I've seen and I hear the that there is a miscommunication or misunderstanding between uh, you know the pastor and the worship pastor or a worship leader simply because things was not communicated properly or whatnot okay uh, and it falls apart and it's never a pleasant sight when that happens okay um, God intends that a mutually cooperative unity prevail between the senior pastor and the worship pastor uh, God has blessed each of us with abilities that are uniquely our own, and we must be content with our gifts. So uh, the pastor and the worship pastor are not in competition. Okay. Uh, senior pastor will have a vision for the church. Okay. Uh, the vision for our church is to be the salt and light of the city of Bangalore and, and the nation of India and the nations. Okay. The worship pastor cannot come and say, I have my own vision. Uh, you know, I don't want to be the salt and light. I have a completely different agenda, objective. What happens when that happens? It's, it is a clash of ideas, isn't it? There's a clash of vision. It doesn't help anybody. It hurts the church. Eventually, it hurts the people in the church. That's what I mean. Okay, so a pastor and the worship pastor are not in competition, should not be in competition. Uh, each is able to contribute in areas that make the ministry more effective. Okay, so... Our relationship with our pastor uh, has three important ingredients, so to speak, okay, um, to keep that relationship healthy. First one, respect. Okay, worship pastor needs to respect by submitting to his authority, to the senior pastor's authority, accepting the direction and the decisions of the pastor. Okay, you see the word submitting there. And one of the points that we learned from David's worship team, if you remember, was that all of the musicians were under the supervision of their fathers and their fathers were under the supervision of the king. Okay, they were submissive, right? Um, so the same thing is applied here. Worship pastor needs to respect uh, by submitting to um, the senior pastor's authority accepting the direction and decisions of the pastor, okay? Now, this is not to say that you will not have disagreements with the pastor, okay? Let me be very clear about that, okay? You, you might disagree with your senior pastor, okay? But it's like saying, you know, you can disagree with me, but you can still respect, okay? I can disagree with you, but I can still respect you. You get what I'm saying, right? So uh, disagreement doesn't necessarily mean disrespect as well. So uh, if you disagree, you will do that in a respectful way as well, okay? Uh, so the pastor you should show respect to the worship pastor by not constantly interrupting. So if you're the senior pastor, you don't constantly interrupt and nag and, um, uh, you know, uh, enforcing certain things, uh, methods without consideration, right? Okay, uh, so there's a mutual consent, mutual respect, there's communication that is involved, okay? So that's the first part. The second ingredient is the consideration. What does that mean, okay? What is consideration? It, when the pastor and the worship leader or pastor have different ideas about what the direction the service should take, each must have consideration for the other, okay? The worship leader should be considerate of the pastor, respecting his expertise, his experience, his vision for the church, etc. And the pastor may allow the worship leader to make mistakes due to the lack of experience and correct him/her gently after the service. So consideration is 
you you are being considerate toward one another okay uh, i understand where you want to take you know this is the this is the kind of service you want to have in your church i understand so i will be i will plan my the worship service and what not according to that and the senior pastor should also understand and allow the worship leader the pastor uh, you know uh, to make mistakes you know it's it's very important to have uh, a culture or an atmosphere or an environment where mistakes are are okay you know it's not like you make one mistake and you are fired uh, you're crucified or something like that okay it's very important to have that environment that culture where mistakes are allowed but corrected gently you know not not publicly but in in private right so that is the second part consideration you take each other into consideration you understand pastor's vision and what he wants to do and likewise and uh, the third point the third point in stressing this relationship with the pastor is communication okay uh, communicate uh, there is no such thing as too much communication with your pastor okay can i say that again there is no such thing as too much communication with your senior pastor or vice versa okay if you are the senior pastor there is no such thing as too much communication with your worship pastor it's always good always good to communicate with each other the smallest things world war has happened because of miscommunication guys okay uh, how many times we have misunderstanding because of miscommunication i thought you were going to do this so i did not make dinner i thought you were going to buy something and come for how many times have you experienced this right i've been there you know i thought you were going to buy breakfast and come that's why i didn't make breakfast uh, <laughs> in a day and age where communication has uh, been made so easy like you know sms whatsapp instagram facebook you can communicate however you want right um so make use of all those platforms that you can communicate uh, to you know to uh, to communicate with each other okay so that's the third point and uh, three sub uh, sub points uh, to uh, make sure that you have a healthy relationship with your pastor okay and the fourth relationship that makes or breaks is your relationship with your team members okay your relationship with your team members okay and hebrews 313 we are told to encourage one another okay uh, the same things we see in ephesians chapter 5 as well you know sing psalms spiritual psalms to one another okay it simply means uh, we are to be in a community where we encourage one another okay so our relationship with our team members is very crucial okay uh, our ability to maintain friction free friendships among our volunteer musicians technicians arts leaders and fellow worship leaders uh, relationships depend on our ability to lavishly encourage those who look to us for leadership if you are in a place of leadership if god has placed you in a place of leadership uh, it's very important that you are in constant touch with your team members and to keep encouraging them in their walk uh, you know uh, with their with god and if they make any mistakes it's you just encourage them say hey it's okay you give them constructive feedback uh, in how they can improve and then, and you do that in a way that it's loving and encouraging okay it's not going to go well all the time but you do your part okay um we can find ourselves caught up in criticism backbiting unspoken competition in our team members all these unhealthy thing you know gossip uh, complaining uh, backbiting etc etc uh, you know but it's very important that you, that i mean that you pray more with your worship team members with your uh, with the larger team overall be honest uh, and loving at the same time okay um know when a team member is overextended 
know when, when to give that person a break. If that person is being leading worship for every Sunday, uh, month after month, and not taking a break, um, it's up to you as a leader to see all that, to recognize that as like, and say, it's like, hey, you know, Siddharth or Kannan, you know, you've been, uh, you know, uh, been active every Sunday, been involved every Sunday uh, and whatnot. Just, you know, take a break. And, you know, when you do that, that person feels like, okay, my pastor is seeing and he's involved. He knows what, what is happening. He's involved. Now it's up to that person. If the person wants to take a break or not, it's up to them, but it's our, uh, to the leadership to acknowledge that as well okay a uh, small small things like that guys goes a long way like i said everything is not mentioned in this point okay uh there are so many points there's so many small small things that is not mentioned in this that you can do as a leader yeah uh, encourage your team members uh you know to be difficult to offend that means uh teach them not to get offended easily Okay, teach them to be teachable, right? Um, easy to encourage, caring in the way they handle one another. Um, and uh, and l let me tell you guys, I mean, uh, like I said, worship ministry is challenging. Uh, one of the reasons is simply because people are involved. And every time people are involved, it's not always easy. It's not the most smoothest ride, okay? The people are different, so there will be different ideologies, uh, et cetera, et cetera, that can cause friction with one another. Um, how you handle that, how you teach them to work with, uh, work together with one another is very important, okay? Um, so your, the health of your worship team members, uh, you know, physical, spiritual, um, and making sure that they are encouraged uh, is up to you as well. So all of these four relationships, uh, it, it's vital. Okay, it will make you or break you, uh, break your worship ministry or any ministry that you're a part of. Okay, so what are the four uh, ministry? Uh, sorry, uh, relationships. First one is your relationship with God, your relationship with your family, your relationship with your pastor. And how is your relationship with your team members? Okay. Uh, any questions so far? Anything you'd like to add? Thomas, uh, Kiran, Kanan. Uh, I think it's covered everything. Uh, the order is very clear. The relationship with God, relationship with the family, relationship with the, the pastor and the members. It's it's a very clear order. When we have the good relationship with the God, only we can able to deal with the people. Where yes. uh, in the presence of God, only the fruit the fruit of the Holy Spirit will be manifested: patient, love, long suffering, yes. everything. Because when we handling with the people, so many times we lose our patience. So many times we get, as you said, making a break. Both will happen for a yeah. pastor, yeah, worship leader. It's very difficult. It's tricky, yeah. So if, if we don't have a strong relationship with the God, surely we will break up. But if yeah. we have the relationship with God, surely He will make us. He will. We will. He will build us. Yeah. So that's a very um, beautiful order. Uh, this thing. Yeah. Uh, it's clear. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, uh, anybody else? Kanan, would you? Uh, I mean, any questions or any thoughts? Siddharth, Prince? Yeah, I think I would like to say about like uh, not getting offended. Because that's the main thing. Yeah, because if last week when I was in the worship team and they kind of like reduced the whole volume of my mic. <laughs> so I was offended. You know? So I was trying not to be offended and stuff like that. Yeah, that's a lot of things happen. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah thanks for sharing that, Siddharth. I appreciate it for being honest. Uh, yeah, see, the thing is, we all get offended. Okay. Let's let's be realistic. We all get upset, right? 
right? Uh, when things go, does not go the way we want it to go. Um, but what we do after we get offended is what matters. You know, um, I think um, uh, you should, I mean, you, I would encourage you to, uh, all of us actually to uh, read the APC publication uh, on you know, pastors written on offense. Uh, you know, it, it's it's awesome, and um, and and how uh, this is author uh, John Bivier, I think John Bivier, he's written a book called uh, Offense. It's a bait of Satan, a bait, b a i t. Uh, it simply means bait is what like uh, you use a worm to catch a fish. No, that's that's a bait. It's like you are. Uh, you know, attracting the fish to come. So uh, offense is a bait that Satan uses, uh, you know, to uh, just destroy our life in, in many ways. So, uh, I mean, if you want to have your team healthy spiritually, uh, you know, teaching them to overcome offense is very important, right? Um, and, and and see, like, you you tell me the difference, guys, okay? Uh if I come, you know, I come and correct, let's say Siddharth, okay, uh, and I have not spent personal time with you. I have never, you know, picked up my phone and said, okay, hey, Siddharth, how are you doing? How is your life? How is everyone? Everything okay? Uh, is there something that I can pray for? Okay, and I've done that over time, uh, month after week after week, month after month, and I've built that personal rapport with Siddharth. And then if I go to Siddharth and give a feedback or correct him, uh, it will be taken, uh, you know, hopefully positively, Siddharth. <laughs> uh, instead, when I have not built any personal rapport uh, with him, I have not made a phone call to check on how his life is, how he is doing, uh, how his family is doing, nothing. But I just go and just because he's in my worship team, and I'm I'm in the place of leadership. I say like, hey, you know what? I did not like the way you sang, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, that feedback is not going to be taken very well, and he is going to be offended, and it's going to be hard for the person to overcome. So, I think it's you need two hands to clap in a sense, right? So, the leadership and and the worship team members need to work together. You build relationship, build rapport, make an effort. Uh, it. You know, it's not to say it all comes down to the worship pastor. Worship pastor has to make the call. You know, he has to follow up. He has to do that. Yes, he has to. But it's also nice one now and then when when the when the worship team member also messages that pastor. So we are also human beings, isn't it? Uh, and says like, "Hey, pastor, how are you doing? Uh, how is everything going? Uh, all well?" Uh, so this beautiful relationship that is being built, and uh, and there's very small room for uh, offense. It's very hard to get offended with each other, right? Um, when, when, the relate, when the personal relationship is strong. Uh, and one of the key things that, uh, you know, I want to highlight here is that uh, it's also vital that I mention that relationship between members of opposite sex must always be kept above a board, you know, with people keeping and respecting appropriate intimacy boundaries, both in public and in private, okay? Uh, setting guidelines, uh, you know, for opposite sex and how uh, how are they to behave? It's very important, isn't it? Especially uh, in, in India as well, right? Um, so those are the four uh, relationships that make or break us in our journey. Um, but uh, very quickly, if I can just mention, so we've spoken about the introduction of worship ministry. We understood that there are challenges and that you need certain skills. Uh, that you need to develop uh, to be in worship leadership uh, as minist and in ministry and for relationships that make or break us. Then now we come down to, uh, so what should be the goals of the worship ministry? Okay, what should be the goals of a worship ministry? Okay, uh, like a body, there are many, many parts to a worship ministry. Uh, just as a toothache can affect the entire body, give you migraine, whatnot, ear pain. It's amazing how something so small can dominate uh, when pain is involved, right? So likewise, small things need to be looked after, okay? So uh, the goals of worship ministry, uh, once again, uh, only three points I mentioned. It doesn't have to be three, but just three important points that I felt it's uh, important. One is nurturing and encouraged and joyful worship ministry community okay 
uh, one of the goals of worship ministry is nurturing a an encouraged and a joyful worship ministry community. Two is creating effective, consistent, and beautiful worship environments. And finally, establishing longevity in your volunteer uh, force as of musicians, techs, and leaders. Okay, uh, how can they continue to serve for a long time? It's not like, okay, I'm going to serve for one month and take one year break. Uh, that can happen. Um, but how do we make sure that they are not burnt out? That's, you know, that's basically what the third point is, establishing longevity. Okay. So first one, first point is nurturing, making sure they are all nurtured with God's word uh, and et cetera, et cetera. You're teaching them, uh, you know, that, that's what nurturing is about, isn't it? Uh, and you create, second point is creating, you create a culture, you're creating an environment, an atmosphere of being consistent and that you show and you lead by example, by you being consistent, uh, you know, uh, and, and whatnot. So uh, in my opinion, uh, these three, uh, you know, will help your worship ministry be effective and go the extra mile. Okay. So uh, we'll end here. We'll take a break. Um, I'll, Stop presenting and stop the recording. And we'll be back after the break. I'll see you all in 10 minutes, guys. Okay? Thank you.